I've been developing a custom game engine over the last several years called Iris. It supports many of the things you would expect in an engine, but up until this point I've not actually made a game with it, so I've decided to change that. I wanted to make an action RPG, kind of like Skyrim but without the insane budget. Something simple, yet playable. I created a new project and called it Trinket, as the name pretty much sums up my expectations of the game. As I wanted to focus on building the game and testing the engine, I looked around online for some free assets, as Iris doesn't have an asset store like Unity or Unreal does. I found this chap called Quaternius, who's produced some amazing low-poly and CC0 license models. Luckily for me, he's created an RPG character pack, so I took the warrior model and ported it into the game and managed to get it sliding around on the screen square. Next, I took a weapon from another pack and attached it to the hand. It was here that I noticed the first limitation of the engine. I could only play one animation at a time, so I could either walk or swing a sword, but not both. A not so quick refactor later and I added an animation controller which allows you to set different animations per bone and blend them all together. Now that the player can swing a sword, I needed to add something for them to hit back to Quaternius's box of tricks, and he has a cute animated monster pack. I picked the mushroom for no other reason than it just looked the most shocked in the thumbnail and I imported it into the game. To mix things up, and to better test the engine, I scripted up a basic state machine AI in Lua, which Iris can load and run. To check for collisions, I added a collider to the sword and mushroom. It was here that I found the next issue with Iris. Whilst I'd added all the code to process collisions internally, I'd not added any way to get this information out. So after adding a new method, I can now query a rigid body for all other bodies that intersect it. I then added health, a health bar and a death state which quickly brought the enemies to life and then promptly back to death again. As Iris is currently a code-only engine, I thought the best way to create a level would be to describe the whole scene in a YAML file, which the game would then pass. This turned out to be a terrible idea, as trying to manually place all the objects with no reference point was a bloody nightmare. Instead, I imported all the assets into Maya and arranged them how I wanted. I then wrote a quick Python script which walked the scene and converted it into a YAML file, which could then be fed into the game. After the player beats the mushroom into a puree, it would be nice if they were rewarded with some loot for their effort. And here I encountered the next limitation with my engine. You see, when you create a scene, you set all the objects and lights, as well as any post-processing effects. The engine then takes this scene and creates a queue of render commands. These commands are then handed over to any of the built-in renderers, which will consume them and draw the scene. The problem was that once the scene was converted to this queue, there was no way of actually changing anything. The objects you created at the start of the scene were the ones you were stuck with. I toyed with the idea of just spawning every possible entity I might ever need at the start of the scene and hiding them away somewhere, but that felt like cheating. Instead, I rewrote the entire rendering pipeline so that it could rebuild the render queue when a scene changed. To test this, I created a simple game where pressing B spawned a box and pressing it again despawned it. Honestly, I was super chuffed at this, because the sheer amount of work to make something so simple possible was staggering. That price tag on Skyrim isn't looking too outlandish now. In an attempt to make this ragtag bunch of mechanics an actual game, I added a basic HUD, a quest system and a game state. Finally, to top things up, I added some more props, insufferably silent NPCs, and this dog. Looking back on all the effort I put into making this game, was it any good? Well, the gameplay isn't great, and it's not winning any design awards, but it did do what it set out to do, which was find the feature gaps in Iris and prove it can make a game. The source code for Iris and Trinket are both open source, and a link to their GitHub repos are in the description.